Here's the story of five guys who are way past their primes that get together to pursue their dreams of making it big in the music world. Although they aren't really talented as a band, or as individuals for that matter, they still have a burning ambition of being the rock stars they are called to be. Or at least that's what their egos tell them. Join us on their story of One Last Chance to Rock. Um, so there is this one venue in our area that everybody always wants to wants to play at. It's a really nice venue. Uh, already has sound built in, has the lighting built in, has a stage, dance. It's a really nice place. So we reached out to them, and um, we got an email back where it basically said uh, no. So I wrote back to him, trying to be a little bit more uh, persistent. So he said, "Fine, we're going to give you we're going to give you a chance." All right, we were offered the opportunity to play at a venue. And Rob had tried really hard. I mean, I give him, you know, kudos for uh, landing this thing. We were so excited because this is the type of venue that you want to play at. This is where you make a name for yourself. Here's a Saturday. It was like th two or three days before Christmas, uh, the Christmas holiday. And uh, he was like, I expect you to fill the place. Well, we had just had, we had a gig already booked for the week before. And needless to say, we did our absolute best to try to get a lot of people there. We didn't get as many people as, you know, we had hoped. The, the, the venue su supposedly wasn't happy with the amount of people that we got. Um, so at, after the venue, I wrote back to the gentleman and said, thank you so much for letting us uh, have that opportunity. It was a wonderful experience. We heard the bar did very well. Uh, so we're really happy all the way around. So we, last year we, we played this show and I tell you what, the, the guys, they, they thought they were good then and they were lacking. They were severely lacking. We take criticism pretty well. We want to know what we could do to improve. Well, we went to the bar. We asked the bar how they did because that was our concern. And then the uh, following week, uh, Rob received an email and um, there were some very unkind things said about us. He wrote back to me and said, you'll never play this place again because it was awful. I heard it was awful. I wasn't there, but there were people there that told me it was awful. They were wondering why they were like, oh, you guys aren't real good. Oh, yeah. They, they got mad because it was crap and they got told it was crap. Uh, so he wrote back with a laundry list of reasons why uh, he heard that he didn't like us. Uh, reason number one, which was probably the one that really hurt the most, uh, was uh, no theme and no costumes. First of all, we played a Christmas show. How many guys showed up in a Christmas outfit? One. None of them guys. Right? Did they have any kind of song selection? What were they playing? They were playing Stevie Ray Vaughan. Who, who wants to hear Stevie Ray Vaughan Christmas songs? That's what they played. Come on. So we got asked to play back there again, right? They were all real surprised because they had asked and asked and they said, no, no, you're never gonna play here again. Uh, this has really turned into a, re a redemption gig for us. Uh, we want to uh, blow the roof off this place. We're, we're not doing any gigs. We haven't done any gigs for a month. We're kind of, been blessed with an opportunity to go back there and try and do it so what we're going to do is we're going to go back there and melt their faces i'm really excited about this because i've had to work through all of uh, these issues um, that came out of that email so um so what 12 months of therapy i think i'm ready to go so i actually didn't play at the venue the first time i wasn't in the band yet but from what the guys talk about it, it's a pretty sore spot uh they don't really like to talk about it too much around me. It brings up some uh, some strange feelings. I, I see sometimes Kevin gets a little shaky and sometimes has to go into a, a, another room and shut the door for a little bit. Therapy was uh, a key component in my recovery. Rob just gets really angry. Um, so I, I generally don't bring it up around the guys. And I've even, even seen John just kind of drop his bass guitar and just walk out of the room too. So it's... It's kind of a sore spot for the guys. I'm, I'm preparing the same typical way I always prepare, man. You know, I just kind of wake up and I meditate for about three hours. I like to infuse, uh, or diffuse, excuse me, some oils and stuff in my room so that way it has a really nice mellow feel to it. I, sometimes if I get the opportunity to, I'll go into my wife's clinic and I'll get some cupping done. <laughs> I'm gonna prepare for this gig like I prepare for any gig. I usually wake up at three in the morning. Um, I do 30 jumping jacks. Then I review modal theory on, on my guitar. You know, I first started off like a little bit of an Irish Mixolydian style scale, 
And then I'll kind of go into low green, a little bit darker stuff. Then I always finish in the blues. Sometimes I'll finish in jazz. From there, I you know get a shower, work out, go to work, come home. Um, my kids are usually like, Daddy, Daddy, help me with my homework. And I'm like, wait, hold on, guys. You have to quiz me on all my chords. So I have a, a chord chart at home that has about 630 chords and variations of chords. And I'll just have them yell out certain chords. And, uh, you know, sometimes the kids get upset because they really want to do their homework. But I feel this is a little bit more important. And I just want us to have fun. I want us to play the kind of music that we know how to play with the quality that, that we put out every time we play. And I just don't want to push things too far just because I'm worried about what other people think. Trying too hard. You know how like you're going on a date with somebody and you're trying to impress them and the next thing you know they're asking you not to call them ever again? That's my only concern. Really anything can happen with this band. That's one thing I've learned about playing with the 4 on 2 district. And this time we actually have a set list, so I actually get to practice. To me it's just another gig. I mean, I'm hoping we can get over this hurdle for these guys because really want to knock this one out of the park. Some, like just play, like uh, like whatever, like three on three, four on four, whatever we got. How many kids we got? All right. So, you know, What's up? Yeah, Nervous about the gig? Kid, we lost no, man. Just want to have fun. I practiced last night actually for the first time, and I typically, you know, don't need to practice for these gigs because I, what I told you before, but you know, you are the talent of this. I'm the talent, so uh, yeah. This last one, I want to make sure we sound good, so I did practice. Am I nervous? No, I'm not nervous. I don't get nervous. I enjoy myself. I have a good time. I'm really pretty calm. And ugly, <laughs> but I mean, I see that. What do you expect? <laughs> you know. Uh, no, I, how do you think it's gonna go tonight, John? Um, I think it's gonna go. However, it goes. It doesn't matter. Uh, well, I think we'll still have fun. I think we'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's music. We've all played these songs. How many times? Um, do you know how to play them? I know how to play them. I, I bet you everybody else knows how to play them. When we mess up, I'll look at Rob and tell him we messed up or I messed up. Right? <laughs> well, no, it doesn't matter though. Um, most of the time, but the only people that are going to notice, maybe the sound guy will. But aside from, but aside from that, you know, I mean, nobody cares. So the nice part about this venue is we get what's called a green room. It's our space that we have before the show, after the show, in between the sets. So we have a nice spread here of iced tea, water, I got some hummus, I got some french fries. Thing and I like the fact that we showed up with a green room. That's nice. I've been... Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna be way under <laughs> like this is the high end dude it gets out from here, yeah. <laughs> I mean usually they give us food out of the dumpsters, so this is a, Yeah, I know this, this is this is, is, is not great. It's not great. We're gonna have a great time tonight. So for me, we went out to have fun. I was out there with all my boys and we just had a blast. Um, Sean, you know, blew some people's faces off like he wanted to, you know, he lit it up. My man Adam over there lit it up. Great addition to the band. We showed up this time. We had the harmonies, we had way better music selection. Rob, solid as ever. John, doing his bass thing, you know, rocking it out. And I actually remembered most of the words that night, so it was a very positive experience. And we might even get a chance to play there again. Yes, we, the, the gig went really well. Uh, we had a lot of fun. We didn't have as many fans come out as we would like. There wasn't many people that were there. It was the Thursday night, and I think that they had the bowling lanes and the league came. So there was like five to ten people. We had about six people actually show up. Five of which were my wife and four kids. Kevin kept on asking how everybody was doing. <laughs> <laughs> By the seventh time, he had asked everybody. There were seven people in the house, and being the kind of person that I am, I like to make sure that everybody is having a great time. So I made it a point to reach out and to ask each and every person in that place if they were having a great time, and guess what? 100% said yes. I, I guess we'll only really know if we redeemed ourselves would be uh, if we get a call back. Do I feel redeemed? I mean, I didn't mess up the first time, so I can't really say that I feel redeemed. I mean, it's just 
the usual for me, go out and, you know, melt people's faces off of my guitar solos. So we got to play on the same stage as a couple legends did. Uh, I think it was Mr. Big and Paul Gilbert. I'm hoping we redeemed ourselves and are at least on a positive note with this place now. But remember, I still hate country. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding, man. Just get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs>